Denim, is, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's one item that can unite the world. You, you can go to Amsterdam, you can go to New York, to China, and you can still unite with people because of jeans. You know, everyone wears jeans everywhere in the world. Mm-hmm. No, no matter how um, you may wear your dresses or whatever, but everyone in the world has a pair of jeans. Um, jeans are, are very comfortable. I love how, you know, it's, it's, you are more yourself when you're wearing a pair of jeans than compared to when you're wearing a dress or a suit. You, you are more relaxed. And I love how denim is so versatile. Um, you can play around with it. You can can change it from being a classic piece to a modern piece, depending on how you, the kind of techniques that you use. Mm-hmm. So it's very versatile. It's a very versatile material. And I've always wanted to create something that's um, um, classic, that's timeless. And it's one of those pieces that's timeless. With with jeans, it can give you a lifespan of over fifty years. Mm. You know, mm. so that's that for me is timeless. And it's a market that not a lot of people are in. Not a lot of people of my color, black people, are in. Um, it's a very um, saturated market. It's not an easy market to break in. Yeah. But um, and and I believe in business is business is not just an easy route. There isn't an easy way of doing things. Everywhere and everywhere, you need to make sure Jorge, um, you build your brand, you build your reputation so people can buy into it. Mm. So it's more like that. Even the brands that have, I cannot, um, right where I'm sitting, I cannot compete with brands with have um, a heritage of 150 mm. years, mm. you know. Um, but I can, I can, I have a new story that I'm telling to people and why I love jeans. I think um, that's why it, it has. Um, really attracted a lot of people to 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 my brand the fact that it's locally produced mm-hmm. it's great quality and the name as well yeah. you know it's kitsebo <laughs> you know like people this other dude was saying from from a marketing point of view he was saying to me how are you going to market that yeah because before i we my team and i sat down and said we're going to stick to tepo the gene maker yes we had different other names like Amazing names with creatives, mm. you know, and you, you can imagine the pool of names that we had. Like, there were so many, it was so confusing. And this other dude, we had a conversation early last year. He said to me, why is it a lot of black people, when they put out a brand out there, they conform to the standards. Mm. They want to create a... Um, orthodox, <laughs> you know, a... Because <laughs> white people can say it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and... He said it's about high time that we take ownership of what we do. We feel we have pride. We put a sense of pride in in our own stories and tell our own stories to the world. And I mean, for me, it was, you know what, I'm going to just do this thing and let's see what's going to happen. And within two weeks of just putting the brand out there, we it was it was doing waves. It was making waves and people were buying into it. People wanted to know what, why it's helpful. It's really, really amazing. We're currently working with, um, our website is currently under construction and a whole lot of people want to know where can we find your jeans. Um, on Saturday, last week Saturday, we made about 2,000 hits on Facebook mm. from just people sharing the page. The page wasn't boosted. We didn't put money on it. it people, like, just, we're just sharing. We're sharing, we're sharing the page. We're like, dude, this is so amazing. We get so many emails from different people. Um, and how the kind of the radio stations that we've done as well, the interviews that we've done, um, editorials, bloggers, you know, people who've been talking about the brand. And I think from that perspective, it has really um, drawn attention to the type of brand. What came before the denim in when I, when we were eighteen, a friend of mine's boo, skinny spoo socks. Oh lovely. And I, um, <laughs> we we had a brand called Solomon's Colonnade and we used to sell suits, you know, second hand suits at okay. church. Um we'd get a, like a packet of ten suits for two hundred and fifty and we'll sell a suit for like seven fifty. Hmm. You know, um so so we've always been an entrep- we've always been entrepreneurial people and um with, i ran with solomon's colony for a long time and then i started blogging and then i started doing both fashion week and then i did um african swiss and now i was like you know what this is time and 
like I really, really feel I want to do something very, I'm a very minimalistic person. And um, if I go stylish, I know how to go stylish mm -hmm. and funky, but very minimal. So yeah, it's, it's, it's always been um, a part of me.